Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. We serve a living God, and we're so glad for it. We've come to worship Him today. We've come to exalt Him and lift up His name. How many are ready to see greater works than Jesus did here? The Bible says that He turned to His disciples and said, Greater works than these shall ye do. And that's what we're here to do today. That's what we're here to uplift Him. Come on, somebody turn to your neighbor and say, Greater works. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, Greater works right there in your house. Right there where you're at. Yeah. Come on, we're going to sing right now. Renew, restore, revive your church and make us all ignite, transform, take us to a place we've never seen before. You've done the impossible. We've seen our mountains move before. Your word is unstoppable. With expectation we declare. No mountain stand before us. The no weapon. No weapons formed against us. We're standing on your promise. We believe in you, Lord, for greater things. We know that you are willing. See, no we God. see that you are able. Oh, God. Oh, God, release your favor. We believe in you, Lord, for greater things. Come on, somebody. If you believe it, oh, put your hands together, somebody. Let's uplift him with all our heart. Come on, say renew. Renew, restore, revive your church and make us whole. Ignite, transform, take us to a place we've never seen before. You've done the impossible. We've seen our mountains move before. Your word is unstoppable. Is unstoppable. With expectation we declare. No mountains stand before no us. Weapon. No weapons formed against us. We're standing, We're on, standing on your promise. We believe in you, Lord, for greater things. We know that you are willing. See, no we God. see that you are able. Oh, God. Oh God, release your favor. Yeah. We believe in you, Lord. Say it again. Mountains. No mountains stand before us. No weapons formed against us. We're standing, We're standing on your promise. We believe in you, Lord. For greater things, we know that you are willing. And we see no God. We see that you are able. Oh God, release your favor. Come on, somebody. We know that the dead are still raising, that blind eyes are still opening, that lost souls are still being found, the foundations are shaking, and every curse is breaking. Strongholds are falling, and greater things are coming. Are shaking, are shaking, every and every verse yeah. is breaking. Strongholds falling. are falling, and greater things, and greater things are coming. Somebody say, yeah. Foundations shaking, are shaking, and every verse is breaking. Strongholds are falling, and greater One. things are coming. Say foundations. foundations are shaking. Are and every curse, and every curse is yeah. breaking. Strongholds falling. are falling, and greater things are coming. See, foundations foundations are shaking, and every curse is breaking. Strongholds are falling, and greater things are coming. If you believe in the power of the name of Jesus, why don't you say with us, yeah? No mountains stand before us, no weapons formed against us. Standing. We're standing on your promise. We believe in you, Lord, for greater things. We know that you are willing. And we see, no we God. see that you are able. Yeah. Oh, God, release your favor. We believe in you, Lord, for greater 
Somebody, do you believe it? If Jesus said it, then it's gonna happen. Hey, come on, how many church? Jesus said it. 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 Jesus. Jesus said it. Jesus said it. Oh, Jesus said it. Jesus said it. Scripture 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 said it. Out of your belly. 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 Said it's gonna flow, 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 flow. I've got the river of living water. Yes, I've got the river of living water. I've got the river of living water. I've got the river of living water. Sing it again. I've got the river of living water. I've got the river of living water. I've got the river of living water. I've got the river. You don't believe I've been redeemed. Follow me down to the Jordan stream. I stepped in the water. The water was cold. Chilled my body, but not my soul. Say, you don't believe I've been redeemed. Follow me down to the Jordan stream. I stepped in the water. The water was cold. Chilled my body, but not my soul. Say, I've got the river. Water. Yes, I've got the river of living water. I've got the river of living Flowing water. Out. I've got the river of living water. I've got the river of living water. Flowing out my belly of living water. New life coming in of living water. I've got the river of living water. I've got the river of living Put your hand. water. I've got the river of living water. Yes, I've got the river. I've been redeemed. Follow me down to the Jordan stream. I stepped in the water. The water was cold. Chill my body, but not my soul. Say, you don't believe I've been redeemed. Follow me down to the Jordan stream. Stepped in the water. The water was cold. Chill my body, but not my soul. I've got the river of living water. Yes, I've got the river of living water. Oh, Got the river living water. I've 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 got the river living water. Say Jesus said it. 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 Believe on me, 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 believe on me. Scripture said it, scripture said it, scripture said it, scripture said it, the word of God said it, scripture said it, scripture said it, scripture said it, out of your belly, out of your belly, say out of your belly. Out of your belly, 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 out of your Come on, somebody, give God some praise today. If the Holy Ghost has filled your body, 
if you've never been the same since you should have been there when I came through church was on fire in the Holy Ghost too from the top of my head to the sole of my feet felt the spirit moving all over me you should have been there when I came through church was on fire in the Holy Ghost too from the top of my head to the sole of my feet felt the spirit moving all over me I've got the river of living water. I've got the river. Yes, I do. I've got the river. I've got the river. I've got the river. Living water. Holy Ghost River. Living water. Jesus name river. Living water. I've got the river. Living water. Why don't you high five your neighbor and just say, Jesus, Jesus, yeah. How many know that our God has the victory? Come on, somebody just thank him for having the victory today. There's so many other people that have put their faith in false gods and false ideologies. And one day, when their number is called, they're going to see that their God, their God could not win the victory for them. I said Allah couldn't win the victory for them. Pills couldn't win the victory for them. Alcohol couldn't win the victory for them. All the plethora of other false ideologies could not win the victory for them but it was Jesus atheism couldn't do it I said it was Jesus addictions couldn't do it it was Jesus hey, yeah, yeah. Oh 
Everybody in the house, lift your hands, hey, oh, we love you, God. Is, is there anything too hard for you? Is there anything too hard for our God? No. Oh. Come on, sister, help me say. Is there anything? Is there anything too hard for Is there anything to offer you, God, now? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Everybody say, No, 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 no. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there? You're saying so the walk in it, but he's saying no. of the impossible yeah. I serve a God of the impossible for the next 20 seconds can you just lift your hands right now everybody in this building we sang songs of praise to the almighty God but I feel like some of our attention is not on him right now those of you watching through the live stream can we take our attention off of all of the bills off of all of the responsibilities can we put our attention on God? We are a church. Go ahead. Why don't you uplift him? Why don't you just compliment him? Why don't you just thank him right now? There's nobody like our God. There's no one like our God. Yeah. Oh. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Why don't you put your position on one side? The amount of years you've been in the church, how long you've known God, why don't you put all that to one side for a moment? Put your religion and your traditions to one side and just say, Jesus, if it had not been for the light, if it had not been for you, God, yeah. If it had not been for you, no. And where would I be? You only know. I'm 
glad you see through eyes of love a hopeless case in empty if not for grace why don't you sing that with us come on everybody where would i be with all your heart you only know don't forget the prison cell that he brought you out of out of the gangs that he brought you out of the addictions that he took you from why don't you remember Time where would, where would I be? Oh, you only know, and I'm glad you see, I'm glad you see through eyes of love. Say amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet. How sweet the sound. I once was lost. I once was lost. But I thank you, Jesus. But now I'm found. A hopeless place. An empty place. Can we give God a round of applause today? Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. We want to get ready to move on with our service today. Amen. So at this time, and then we want to invite up our pastor, Elder Jesse Cornejo. Can we give God one more round of applause? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for allowing us to be here today. It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. There are some people that uh, woke up in the hospital. Some people woke up in jail. And some people didn't even wake up at all. But thank God that we're in the house of the Lord. We're blessed today. Amen. We are blessed. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you're blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Amen. I'm not going to be with you long. I just want, we have uh, two, ba we have one baptism today. Uh, so with the help of the Lord, on this service, on this service, and then at two o'clock service, we have another baptism. Amen. With the help of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I just want to, uh, leave a thought with you here today. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And let's go to verse 15. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to thank uh, everyone that helped us out in the harvesting the other, the other last week. Amen. We also want to help, I also want to thank everyone that uh, participating in the uh, Lifeline Cuisine. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for supporting. Amen. We want to get that out with the help of the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. It's a blessing. Amen. Amen. If we can go ahead and stand right now for the reading of the Word. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse 15 says this. For all things are for your sake. Turn to your neighbor and tell him your sake. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of our God. For which cause we faint not. But through our outward man perish, yet the inward, the inward man is renewed day by day. Turn to your neighbor and tell him day by day. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. 
Amen. Uh, let's go to the Lord and word of prayer and ask him to bless this preaching here today. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, Lord, we give you the honor and the glory. We ask you, Lord, to anoint my lips, Lord, that your name may be glorified, that you may be praised for your people. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Come on, let's give God a round of applause. God bless you. You may be seated if you can. Amen. The title of my preaching is Inside Job. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, Inside Job. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Usually when there are people that have an inside job, it's because there is something that's happening on the inside that they already have it down. It's easier for them. They, they start to work on certain things and say it's an inside job. It's something that someone has planned out and something that's happening inside and they cannot figure it out from the outside because it's an inside job. And one of the things that I want to bring to you as the Lord was showing me is that uh, when you get baptized in Jesus' name and get filled with the Holy Ghost, it was always an outside job prior to you coming to the Lord. But once you come to the Lord, now it becomes an inside job. God starts to deal with you on the inside. And this is why Paul said... The things I don't want to do, I do. And the things that I do, I hate doing those things. I said, man, I find inward, in, inside of me, in, on the out, I'm going to go ahead and serve God on the inside. But yet on the outward, I'm going to serve the flesh. He said, it's hard for me. It's very difficult. This is why he said, uh, you know what, there's a, there's a war going on within me. Amen. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? If you've been serving God, come on, that's all right. Amen. If you've been serving God more than two months, amen, you know there's a war going on inside of you. Can you say amen, church? You know there's things that you want to you wanna pray, and then you don't pray. And then you want to fast, and then you don't fast. Then the, the, the boss comes with the lunch all of a sudden, amen, and you're like, Lord, help me, Jesus, because you don't know what to do. And here the Bible tells us that here it's an inside job. The Bible says... Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter four, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3 and verse 17. The Bible says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So the Bible's telling us, first of all, that God came, robed himself in flesh, amen, and he walked here on earth, and we beheld the glory of Almighty God through Jesus Christ, amen. The Bible says that he was robed in the flesh, amen, it was God walking here as on the earth, and we beheld his glory, we beheld the glory of Almighty God. It is so powerful that God can come, robe himself in flesh for you and me, that we might have life and have it in abundance. Amen. He died on the cross so that you might have life. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, he ha you have life. Amen. Without the Lord, you wouldn't have any life. Without God, you wouldn't even be here today. Without God, you wouldn't even have a mind to go ahead and think right. Because the Bible says God didn't give you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Somebody got a sound mind today because Jesus is with you today. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand that the Bible says that we are, uh, we are changed into the image of God. So when the Lord fills you with the Holy Ghost, we are changed into the image of Almighty God, and it is a process that takes place in your life. Turn to your neighbor and tell him it's a process. The process is, is that it takes place in your life and as it con continues to happen day by day, amen, it's not something that's going to happen. Some of you think that God is a lottery ticket where he just comes and boom, you get the full package all at once. That's not the way it works with God. With God, you have to do it day by day because some of you can't handle the whole lottery ticket because you'll waste it. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? 
So I want you to understand that when God starts to deal with you, he deals with you day by day so that you can get revelation and you can stack the revelation on top of another revelation and the stacking continues to get higher and higher and God doesn't deal with you just by day by day. I mean, just by day by day. He deals with you at levels and he starts dealing with you in an area where you can start handling what God is giving you. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you need to handle it. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward is renewed day by day. Also, the scriptures say in 2 Corinthians uh, verse 18, it says, uh, are changed into the image of the glory of God, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So day by day, it's not on the outside that you are changing. When you start changing on the inside, then it starts to reflect on the outside. When you start to become something greater on the inside, then it starts to come on out on the outside because what's on the inside manifests on the outside. God starts to change your life on the inside. It's an inside thing. It's an inside job where God starts to deal with you and to change your heart and your mind because the Bible says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable, perfect will of God in your life. So you got to be transformed. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you got to be transformed. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, he says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. So he, it is a, you know, Paul didn't have, when he was writing, he didn't have chapter and verse. He didn't say, oh, okay, this is chapter 4, let me write verse 1. Amen. What it was is the Bible was written, and as it was written, it was chapter and verse is for you. It's not for Paul and writing to the church at Corinth and saying, okay, this is chapter 4, this is chapter 5, this is chapter 6. It was all together. So Paul comes to the chapter 4, what we call chapter 4, and he says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, he says, since we have this ministry and God is dealing with us, he's saying, okay, now we have received mercy and we faint not. Saying you can't see the outward things that are happening around you and think that you can go ahead and go by those outward things. We got to go ahead and receive the mercy. We receive the mercy of God. We receive the grace of God. And we receive the power of the Lord in order for us to continue to keep moving forward. You can't let the outside things of this world affect your spiritual walk. Can you say amen, church? You can't let anybody come against you and start telling you stuff that's going against the contrary to the Word of God. You can't go to somebody and start talking to them and telling them because their agenda is not to take you to the throne of God. It's not to take you to the Word of God. It's on their own agenda. So you can't be listening to anybody that doesn't have God inside of their life. And this is one of the reasons why the Bible tells us we need to start putting those things to one side and looking forward to the things that are up ahead. Can you say amen, church? So the Bible tells us we faint not. It's natural for a person to be weary, to be tired, to go ahead and say, wait a minute, I've been at this and I feel empty. I feel it's difficult for me. But yet when you have the Lord on your side, God is the one that's supposed to guide you, direct you, and fill you with the power and the glory of Almighty God. A matter of fact, your belly should flow with rivers of living water. I said, your belly should flow with rivers of living water. A river constantly moves, so it's constantly cleaning. Pastor, I feel stale. I feel like I can't move anymore. I feel like there's nothing happening in my life. Well, you got to get with it and start having a, a rivers of living water so it cleans out everything that's there, and God starts to clean everything in your heart out and starts to move. you got to start witnessing. you got to tell somebody about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The reason why is because God wants you to be his glory. And the Bible tells us that here when God is starting to change you, you can be the same way that God is. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So that means if God spoke it into existence, then you can speak it into existence. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, just speak it. All you got to do is speak it into existence. Speak that God is going to bless you and God's going to bless you. 
Speak that God is going to move on your behalf and God's going to move on your behalf. Speak about to your relationship and God's going to change your relationship. God will change your husband. God will change your wife. God will change your children. But somebody got to start speaking it because God wants you to be just and transform just like him so that you can go ahead and start speaking life and speaking it in abundance. The Bible tells us that here in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9, verse 7 says, But we have the, this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. He said, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Can you say amen, church? So the Bible's telling us that here... We are, are uh, troubled in every side. But he also tells us we have treasures in earthly vessels. That means you got a treasure inside of you that is so powerful, so awesome, that you don't even understand or realize how much power you got because God filled you with the Holy Ghost and you got power to even call upon the demons and tell them to get out the way, move them out of the way, out of your house. The devil is a liar. You can call upon somebody. You can take away the veil of sin and let God do something great just by your words that you speak. Just by what you can speak, you can tell them, just confess your sins and God will forgive you of all your sins. You already know that God's going to move on their behalf. That's why we profess somebody's going to get filled with the Holy Ghost here today because then God's going to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. Your, your mouth is already proclaiming it and it's already saying it. You're already prophesying it and God's about to do something in your life. So the Bible tells us that here we have a treasure in earthly vessels. Excellence of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. You can't do anything without God. Don't try to do it without, don't try to do it on your own strength, your own power, because you can't do nothing without God. He said, you can't do nothing without me. Amen. God is so powerful, so great. Amen. That he wants to go ahead and use you for his honor and for his glory. It's an inside thing. You see, the devil wanted to take you out a long time ago, but yet because God saved you, he said, I've got a different story, and I'm about to change the script on this thing so that he was about to die, she was about to die, but right now I'm going to go ahead and change it around so that they got life and life in abundance, and they got a ministry that they got to fulfill. So the Bible tells us, Let's go to verse uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. It says, For which cause we faint not, but though through the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceedingly and eternal weight of glory. So the Bible tells us that here, you're going to go through some trials and some tribulations. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, you're going to go through some things. But it's not supposed to define who you are. It's not supposed to define, hey, wait a minute, I'm going through this and I'm going through that. Though we're perplexed on every side, you're not destroyed. You're not cast down. You're not, you're not taken out. I'm here to tell you that God is about to move on your behalf when you learn how to stand on the inward of what God is doing on the inside of your life. You cannot allow the devil to come in and try to take the things that are happening in your life and try to distract you when you're trying to pray, when you're trying to fast, when you're trying to get a hold of God, the enemy's job is to try to distract you. That's his job. His job is to try to distract you from prayer, from fasting, from getting a hold of God and a relationship with the Lord. And when you start to focus on the inward man, you say, wait a minute, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The world can't affect me. The world can't come near me. And the world can't even come and try to change my mind. I got to stand in the Lord and I got to do everything to stand in these last days. The devil is a liar. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So I want you to understand that he says, and the outward man, we perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. 
So I want you to understand that you can make a decision, a, a temporary decision, when you have, a, a, you make a, a, a decision and it's temporary. Your situation is temporary. But people that are spiritual, it goes to eternal. In other words, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. You're going to stay eternal. So you can never make a decision that's here based on now, here and now, and think that you're going to make this decision that's going to affect you eternally. This is why people choose to go ahead and be in sin because they choose now, but yet they're choosing for eternal. And yet the Bible tells us don't choose it because it's only temporary. You're only going through a temporary process in your life. And when you start going through this temporary process in your life, God starts to change you little by little. Why do you think the enemy is going to try to come back and try to do, try to take you to the place where you used to do the stuff you used to do? As a matter of fact, in John, Peter goes to Jesus and after Jesus is already resurrected he says this I'm going fishing come on somebody the enemy all of a sudden wants to take you back where God brought you from the enemy right away wants to take you right back where he even brought you from. From complacency, from laziness. Amen. From laziness of spirituality. He wants to take you right back from the sin. He said, Jesus, oh man, as soon as he, he was crucified, he said, I'm going fishing. It's not until Jesus went over there and said, wait a minute, I got to get them all together. Even Doubting Thomas was there. And he said, come on, get over here. I got to give you the mission. Amen. The Bible tells us that now Peter got the mission and he began to preach the gospel to every creature. Why? Because there's a ministry inside of you and it's an inside job. God wants to do something great in your life and you can't be just stuck on the things that are happening on the outside. You got to learn how to get a hold of God like never before. Amen. You tell your children, you, always, you tell your children, you know, when they're small and you tell your children, son, do that thing you do. And you, it's only between you and him. And he does the, the Hercules move or he does the muscle move. He goes, Ugh. son, do, do show everybody. And he's like, all right, all right, I'll show everybody. And he does the move. He just, Ugh. Everybody, oh, check him out. That's crazy. That's, that's all right. Everybody everybody's likes your son and everything else. And he, he even looks a little silly. Can you say amen, church? But you don't care. You like the thing. You, you're like, say, show everybody. Matter of fact, put him up on the platform. Everybody stop what you're doing. I want everybody to see what's going on. <laughs> you see, even though, even though as a father, I know what my son has on the inside and the potential that he has to become what he's going to become. God also sees you the same way. And sometimes you're going to look silly doing what God wants you to do. I wish I had a witness in the house. You're going to look silly sometimes doing what God wants you to do, even though he tells you, come on, you got to flex your muscles, and you're going to have to start saying, speaking by faith, and you're going to start worshiping me right there in the car, and it doesn't matter who's looking at you, doesn't matter what's going on around you, I know what's inside of you, I know what's got to come out of you, I know what's inside, I know what God is doing in your life, you're going to have to start stepping out by faith and trusting in the Lord that God is going to be something great there is something that happens to you when you got to step out by faith you know sometimes when you're going through a trial and tribulation in your life you can either take you out or make you stronger can you say amen church you can either give in or you can overcome it turn to your neighbor and tell him give in or overcome it do you, know, do you know that you have that choice? Amen. You have that choice to overcome whatever comes your way. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. You got power. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you got power. You got power to overcome some stuff that comes your way that normally you would not be able to overcome. But God tells you, come on, son, I need you to flex a little bit. Come on, daughter, I need you to flex a little bit. Amen. It's an inside job. God already knows what's inside of you in order for it, that thing to come on out of you. 
You're going to have to start speaking it. Turn to your neighbor and tell them to speak it. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, it says, For which cause we faint not. Now, if you're walking in the things of the Lord, you're not supposed to faint. Your heart is not supposed to go ahead and take heed to all the things that are happening around you. Why? Because you're walking in the Spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So if you're walking in the Spirit, then you're not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Some of you, the lust of the flesh is not drugs anymore. Amen. Pastor, I love to get loaded. Not no more. You've been saved for about five years, ten years. It is not your choice anymore. Now it's laziness. It's called a huevo nada. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's called, it's called laziness, where you don't want to get up and pray anymore, where you don't want to get up and fast anymore, where now it's difficult and it's coming right back around, and you're saying, man, I've been saved for such a long time. I'm here to tell you it's time to renew your faith. It's time to renew your calling. It's time to renew what God has done in your life. The devil is a liar. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Somebody got to get up and start having a zeal and a passion and a drive to get a hold of God like in the first time you came to the Lord. Can you say amen, church? God knows what's on the inside. So I want you to understand that when Moses came and he had a, uh, the Lord spoke to him and told him, I'm going to use you. Um, and then, you know, the things that kind of blows my mind is that God told him that he's going to use him but then everything is going to go against him. He said, I'm going to tell you, Moses, that I'm going to use you, but I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. So he's going to keep telling you no. You know, if, if it was any of us, we would have said, well, what's up? Why are you going to do that? Why are you going to tell him to do that? You're fighting against me. What's the problem? I don't understand. Does anybody know what I'm talking about in the house? When there's obstacles coming your way, it's not basically, it's for you to go ahead and learn how to endure like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And the Lord starts to crush you and make you into something greater. And by the time you know it, you're like, I don't care if they tell me no. I'm going to go anyway because God sent me anyway. I don't care if they look at me crazy. I don't care if they look at me cross-eyed. I don't care what they say. I'm going to give God the honor and the glory. I'm going to be obedient all the way to the end. I'm telling you God is working inside of you for your good. Hallelujah. So Moses comes and now this, this thing is against him and he goes and he tells him, let my people go. He says, nope. Goes again. Nope. He's like, Man, always getting no, always getting rejected. Who loves being rejected? Ain't nobody in this place loves getting rejected. Can you say amen, church? Even if it's an ugly girl, you don't like getting rejected. Even if it's an ugly guy, you don't like getting rejected. Does anybody know what I'm talking about in the house? <laughs> nobody likes getting rejected. And Moses comes to the point where he's being rejected left and right. And he's saying, man, I don't know when this thing is going to give. Sometimes it's going to be difficult for you. But God knows all that he's not going to put you through nothing you cannot handle. Amen. God knows you can handle it. That's why he's putting you through it. That's why you're in it. Because he's perfecting you. He's trying to get you to a place where you get to the next level. And God starts to use you for his honor and for his glory. The devil is a liar here today. Moses comes, first he has to deal with his own self. Can you say amen, church? <laughs> you know, he starts dealing with you. You start to deal with your own self. You got to see yourself. You know, when God came to Moses and told him, hey, I need, I need to use you, all of a sudden he started looking at himself and said, I don't even know how to speak well. Let's do it Moses' version. I don't even know how to speak good or Can you say amen, church? So then he tells him, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. It's very difficult. You start to look at yourself. When God starts to deal with you, you start looking at yourself. 
of all the things you cannot do and the things that you want to do and the fear starts setting in to talk to people that in the past, to talk to people about this and setting new precedents and doing new levels and new areas and God's trying to take you to another place and you're fighting with God and you're saying, I don't want to. I just want to sit in the pew and do nothing. I just want to do this and I want to do that. God's trying to take you to a place and Moses was going through the exact same thing in his life where God already knew the potential that he had, but he kept arguing with God about what potential he did not have. Come on, somebody. See, God already knows how potential you got inside of you. You're just going to have to step out by faith and say, God, if you said it, I'm going to do it. And if you said it, God, I'm going to go ahead and do whatever I got to do. Somebody got to go and realize that the word of God is true. And you got to stand on the word of God and say, devil, you're a liar. Huh? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So Moses comes and. Moses has to see himself. Now he goes to Pharaoh. Pharaoh rejects him. You, first you're going to have your own self-image. And then after you see your self-image, which is not too good. Anybody know what I'm talking about in the house? If you say, my image is good, pastors. <laughs> That's your problem, that your image is good. Can you say amen, church? <laughs> so then, <laughs> Lord have mercy. So then he sees his own image. And the problem is, is now that he's getting, he sees his image, he gets rejected. Now he comes and he has to get rejected from things and people that normally he would not want to get rejected by. Where he would not stand for that in the first place. Some of you wouldn't stand for somebody getting in your face. But because you have the Holy Ghost and you, you're changing day by day, some of you just don't want to change. Some of you are like, I ain't all the way, I ain't all the way saved. I will, I will lay hands on him in Jesus' name. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? But I'm trying to tell somebody that if God is dealing with you and you are changing day by day, then God is going to use you tremendously because now you have a reflection of the glory of God and they start seeing Jesus inside of you, the hope of glory. And now all of a sudden you become a reflection of what Jesus is when you don't lift up your hand and you say, Jesus loves you and God loves you and I love you and you're going to make heaven your home. God's going to do something great. All of a sudden God's starts to deal with you day by day, change you every day, because it's an inside job. It's not an outside job. It's an inside job where God is changing you on the inside. Turn to your neighbor and tell him it's an inside job. Moses comes to the place where now he's rejected. And now the Lord gives him what he wants. The Lord goes and he gives him. He says, let my people go. And Pharaoh comes and says, take them. Do what you got to do. Just because the Lord gives you what you want, the Lord is going to bless you. Turn to your neighbor and tell him the Lord is going to bless you. Now comes responsibility of that blessing. I wish I had a witness in the house. Because you got to be responsible for what God has given you. Now, all of a sudden, now, he comes to the point where he's, he's leading everybody. He's happy. He's, he's loving Jesus. He's walking with it. Come on, guys. Let's go. Everybody, let's go. Everybody's singing. They got gold. They got bread. They got all kinds of stuff. Matter of fact, they took off with the gold and all of the economy of Egypt. They were doing it. We're, we're, we're good. Moses in the front. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Let's go. Let's move forward. Let's get out of here. Moses be doing it. But then all of a sudden comes the Red Sea. There's a trial that's coming that goes above and beyond his understanding and his intellect. 
And now all of a sudden he gets there and what was he was going good and everything was going fine. All of a sudden now he comes and he says, man, what do I do? How do I do this? I got to turn to Jesus because this thing is much bigger than me. I can't handle it. I don't understand it. I can't comprehend it. But I know who somebody who can. Huh? I know Jesus can comprehend it. I know God can see me through. I know God is going to do something great. I wish I had a witness in the house that knows what I'm talking about. And the Bible tells us that now when he comes to the point where it is difficult for him, he cries out, cries out to God. And when the Lord shows him, he says, use the rod, use what's in your hand. I know you got potential. You know that God called you because he already called you for a ministry that you don't even have yet. Let that sink in for a little bit because some of you got ministries that are worldwide. Some of you got international ministry. Some of you got, uh, you, some of you got only the city. Some of you got only the nation. Some of you, some of you got ministries that you got to start stepping out by faith and trusting in the Lord and saying, I don't know how to do it, but God's about to open the door for me. I don't know how he's going to open it, but I know God is going to just open floodgates for me. Somebody got to have faith because it's inside of you to succeed and get into where God wants you to be. So I want you to understand that he comes to a point where now he has to turn to Jesus. When he turns to the Lord and he turns to God and, and he's saying, Lord, uh, the Egyptians are behind you. You know, it's very difficult for some people when there's pressure. They change when there's pressure. Can you say amen, church? <laughs> when you got pressure behind you, you kind of even lose the scriptures. You just whew. Help me. Can you say amen? You go back to the sayings of your mom and your dad. Just call upon the blood of Jesus. Can you say amen, church? So you kind of even lose it right in the middle of everything. But Moses said, wait, I got to call upon the Lord. I would not be here if it wasn't for God. I would not be at the edge right here facing the, facing the sea and facing the enemy if it wasn't for God. If it wasn't for God to take us out of Egypt, amen, you wouldn't be in the condition of where you're at in the first place. God's trying to take you to a next level and put the fear to one side and put the anxiety to one side so that God can use you in a miraculous miracle that God can move in your life. It's time. Turn to your neighbor and tell him it's time. It's time for you to get out of your situation and get into the next level of your life and start moving for God's honor and God's glory. There's somebody that needs to start moving and saying, God, I can't stay here any longer. Can you say amen, church? So I want you to understand that when God starts to move in your life, it is something that happens within you that there is a change. You know, when it starts happening on the inside, people will not recognize who you are on the outside. You see, they never done that before. They never put church first before. They never prayed like that before. They never fasted before. I invited them out to eat. Man, they're fasting. They just threw me out to the curb. Said, no, I don't want to go. It's ribs. They said, no, I don't care. Ribs or not, I'm still going to fast. They, people understand. They get, you got to understand that people will start looking at you differently. Lord have mercy. I hear some stomach growling right now. So I want you to understand that the inside is more important than the outside. Because the Bible says what you can see is temporal. But what you cannot see is eternal. So what is on the inside is more important than what's on the outside. 
And when God starts to work with you, it starts to change from the inside out. Why does he do that? Because you have a ministry that you can go to somebody, even though you're hurting on the back and you got your leg hurting. You're going to say, I'm already healed in Jesus' name. Amen. God's going to heal me. God's going to deliver me. And God's going to set me free. And then you can go to them and say, you need prayer for healing? I know God's going to use me to heal you. And God's going to do something great. He's working on the inside so that you can work on the outside. The desire has to come from the inside to go ahead and let God do what he has to do on the outside. Can you say amen, church? Amen. Amen. I want you to understand that here the Bible tells us that the woman with the issue of blood, things started happening on the inside. Now, I want you to understand something. The woman with the issue of blood, the Bible says she was sick for 12 years. And as she was sick for 12 years, she went to every doctor, everybody, and nobody could help her. Nobody could had the cure for her. So what was on the inside, she needed to change. And she didn't want to continue living the same way or being the same way. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, today's your day. Today's your day for change. All you got to do is make up your mind and say, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. I'll be changed. And from this day forward, I will never be the same. God will do something great in my life. I wish I had a witness in the house today. I wish I had somebody that would say, I'm here today. God's going to touch me today. God's going to fill me today. I wish I had somebody that made up their mind that today is my day. On the inside, God is going to do something great on the inside. When he starts doing something great, do you know when the, when the woman is pregnant, she doesn't even feel it in the beginning. Some hardly feel it. Some don't even know they're pregnant. And you say, amen, sir. It doesn't mean that God's not working on you just because you don't feel it. God's already working on you. He started working on you right when the beginning and the conception, he was working on you. He said, I knew you before you were even born. I knew you when you were in your mother's womb. I anointed you. I called you. I already did something great. You already have a purpose. You already got a destination. You already got where God wants you to be. Somebody needs to understand that God wants to take you to the next level. Can you say amen, church? You can't be so distracted with the stuff that's on the outside and allow the enemy to distract your movement that's on the inside. Let me explain something to you. Music, please. The enemy comes. The Bible says Jesus has a government. According to Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, Jesus has a government. He has a kingdom. So his kingdom is one where He already won. We already have the victory. So the kingdom of this world wants to come in and distract the kingdom that's working on the inside. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? So then this way you can start focusing on the kingdom that's on the outside. I wish I had a witness in the house. And you can don't focus on the stuff that's on the inside. So wait a minute, I don't, can't pay my bills and I can't do this and, I, and I'm getting sick and afflicted. I don't know about you, but my word says that God is my provider and my healer and he's my buckler and he's my shelter and he's my everything that's going to happen. Somebody got to get out of this kingdom and step into the kingdom that's on the inside that's trying to break out and go on the outside. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go like that. Go ahead. You want to play it slow? Go ahead. Anyways, this is my point. My point is, is that some of you are struggling. Listen, I, I want you to understand what I'm preaching here today uh, because some of you are struggling from the stuff that's on the inside and you're trying to figure out do we pay attention to the stuff on the outside more than we do on the inside? Is it difficult? You know, see, you got to understand, this stuff is eternal. 
So you got to build the inside man more than you do the outside. Paul says, I want you to prosper even in health as your soul prospereth. He said, but, you know, that physical stuff only profiteth little. He said, I want you to understand that this thing is eternal. I want you to fix what's on the inside. You can fix it. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, you can fix it. If you take heed to the word of God, you can fix it. He says, if you walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh, he said, you can fix this. He said, they that are in the flesh mind the things of the flesh, but they that are in the spirit things of the spirit. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. He said, you can fix this. He says, I thank God more. I see, he said, I thank God that you do not walk like that, but you're walking in the spirit and you're letting God take you where you need to take you. Some of you just got distracted in the process and you let the flesh try to take you. But now I'm here back again saying, I want to get back in. I got to start dealing with the inside. I got to let God do what he has to do on the inside. Can you say amen, church? It's okay. I'm finishing. That's it. One more minute. It's okay if you messed up. I want everybody to understand this. It's all right. You fell yesterday. You fell last week. You fell two days ago, three days ago. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Yesterday's gone. You can't do nothing about yesterday. Yesterday's already gone. You know who brings up yesterday? The devil brings up yesterday. Can you say amen? The devil is a liar. He brings up yesterday. All your past, your failures, your, your shortcomings, everything. He brings it all up. Tomorrow is promised you. And tomorrow you can change tomorrow. You can go ahead and make it brand new. You can get up in the morning. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to walk in the newness of Christ. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. I'm tired of listening to the flesh. I'm tired of listening to the things of this world. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Does anybody know what I'm talking about in the house? Come on, let's all stand. I do not care whether you did something yesterday, whether you smoked, smoked, you drank, you did stuff, you sure aren't supposed to. So what? Don't matter. Today, God will forgive you today. I said, God will forgive you today. Come on, somebody give God a round of applause. It's all right. God's mercy is so great. He says, God's mercy is so great, brother and sister, that we can't comprehend it. You can't do good enough to go ahead and say, God, I did good enough. Now you can forgive me. You can't do good enough. You can't be good enough. You just God's mercy and God's grace just covers you with the blood of Jesus Christ that goes past and beyond your intellect and your understanding. I'm here to tell you that God loves you so much that he wants you to...